In this video, we're going to talk about the haloform reaction and also the iodoform test. But let's go over the iodoform test. The iodoform test is a test for methyl ketones. So if you have a ketone that has a, a methyl group or a CH3 group next to it, it's going to give a positive iodoform test, which is basically a mixture of iodine and hydroxide. It could be sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. This could be dissolved in water. And what's going to happen is the ketone is going to be oxidized into a carboxylate ion. The methyl group is going to be attached to three iodine atoms. So this product is known as iodoform. And it precipitates out of the solution as a yellow solid. The presence of that yellow solid gives you a positive test, a positive iodoform test for methyl ketone. But now let's talk about the mechanism of the haloform reaction, going from this methyl ketone into the carboxylate ion. Now let's say that the R group doesn't have any alpha hydrogens. The alpha hydrogen is basically a hydrogen that's one carbon away from the ketone group. Now in the first step, hydroxide is going to act as a strong base. And it's going to remove an alpha hydrogen. The carbon-hydrogen bond is going to break. Those electrons will return to the carbon atom. So we're going to get an intermediate that looks like this. It's going to be a CH2 with a, a negative charge on the carbon. Now the reason why this hydrogen is acidic is because the conjugate base is stabilized by resonance. So if we want to, we can draw the enolate ion. Now for the next step, we can use this resonance form or this resonance form to participate in the next step. I'm going to alternate between the two. So at this point, the enolate ion will react with iodine. Using this particular resonance form, the enolate ion is going to take a lone pair from its oxygen, forming a double bond, causing this double bond to attack the iodine molecule, giving us this product. So in the first step, or so far at this point, all we did was we replaced an alpha hydrogen with an iodine atom. Now, what do you think is going to happen next? So next, we need to remove the other two alpha hydrogens. So let's use hydroxide to do that. So this time, I'm not going to draw the resonance structure of the enolate ion. I'm going to leave the negative charge on a carbon atom. So you can be familiar with the different ways of showing the mechanism. So now, the enolate ion is going to react with another iodine molecule. This carbon is going to attack one of the iodine atoms, expelling the other one. And so we need to repeat this process at least three times. We need to replace all three alpha hydrogens with uh, iodine atoms. So now let's go ahead and take off the last one. So let's use hydroxide again to do that. This time, let's draw the other resonance form of the enolate ion. So hydroxide can take off the hydrogen. The carbon-hydrogen bond can break. Eventually, those electrons will move here, causing this pi bond to break. So now we need to use another iodine molecule. So this is going to reform the pi bond, breaking this pi bond, causing it to attack iodine. So now at this point, 
all three alpha hydrogens were replaced with iodine atoms. So we have a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen and a CI3 group. Now at this point, hydroxide has no choice but to act as a nucleophile. It can no longer act as a base because we replace all the alpha hydrogens with iodine atoms. So it's going to attack the carbon, which bears a partial positive charge. And then this pi bond is going to break. So this oxygen had two lone pairs. Now it's going to have three with a negative charge. So here's the OH group. And here's the CI3 group. The CI3 group is a good leaving group. Once we get this tetrahedral intermediate, it's going to collapse, expel in the leaving group. So now, we have a carboxylic acid. Now, a carboxylic acid won't remain in its protonated form for very long under basic conditions. Because the solution is basic, a hydroxide ion is going to react with a carboxylic acid in an acid-base reaction. It's going to react with a weak acid, taking away its hydrogen, giving you the carboxylic ion. So the carboxylic acid will be in its deprotonated form. Now what about the CI3 group? When it was expelled, it looks like this. Now it can take, we can use this as a base to remove this hydrogen if we wanted to, or it can grab a hydrogen from water. And as it does so, it turns into iodoform, which is CHI3. And this is a solid. So this is going to fall down and it's going to precipitate as a solid. Once you see that yellow solid, you know you have a positive iodoform test. That means that you had a methyl ketone in a solution. So how can we apply this information in a test problem? On an, an exam, you might be asked, which of the following compounds will show a positive iodoform test? So feel free to pause the video and work on this example. There might be more than one answer, just so you know. So go ahead, take a minute, and work on this problem. So let's begin. Now remember, we're looking for a methyl ketone. So that means next to the ketone, there has to be a carbon that has three alpha hydrogens. Let's focus on this ketone. So here are the two carbons of interest. That's one carbon away from the carbonyl group. Let's focus on those two carbons. On the left, this carbon has two hydrogens because that carbon is bonded to two other carbon atoms, and carbon can only form four bonds. On the right, this carbon has three hydrogens, which is a methyl group, so that is a methyl ketone. Therefore, this particular ketone will show a positive test. So this answer is correct. Let's put a check here. Now, what about the ketone on the right? Is that a methyl ketone? Well, let's look at the two carbons that are right next to the carbonyl group. This carbon has two hydrogens, and this one has two hydrogens. So this is not a methyl ketone. None of the alpha carbons contain three alpha hydrogens. Looking at the next one, here we do have a methyl ketone. This carbon here only has one hydrogen, but the carbon at the end has three, which is a methyl group. Now for this side, this, we know there's not going to be three hydrogens here. This carbon only has two. So this is not a methyl ketone. So only these two will show a positive iodoform test. Now, are there other functional groups that can give us a positive iodoform test? What would you say? Is it only methyl ketones? Well, anything that can become a methyl ketone by the iodine reagent can show a positive iodoform test. A good example is an alcohol. Let's say this is an R group, but that this alcohol has a methyl group next to it. Iodine is an oxidizing agent. It can oxidize the secondary alcohol into a ketone. 
And so notice that it can produce a methyl ketone. And then since the solution still contains iodine, and it's still basic, this will eventually turn into a carboxylate ion. And we're also going to get iodoform. So an alcohol that has a methyl group at the end, in this case, like a secondary alcohol, as long as it has a CH3 group at the end, then it can give a positive iodoform test. So let's talk about the oxidation reaction between an alcohol and iodine. Let's see how this is, how this will work. So keep in mind, a solution is under basic conditions. So what we need to do first is we need to remove the hydrogen on the alcohol. So we're going to have an alkoxide ion. Now this step is slow because this particular base is stronger than hydroxide. So this part is reversible with the larger arrow facing towards the left. So that's like a slow step. Once you take off the oxygen, I mean the hydrogen, this oxygen can attack an iodine molecule. Hydroxide can do that too, but it's reversible. Once you add a leaving group to the oxygen atom, you can now oxidize it. So the hydrogen that is directly attached to the carbon that bears the oxygen is the hydrogen that we want to pay attention to. So now we can use another hydroxide molecule or ion in the solution to remove this particular hydrogen. Once it does so, the carbon-hydrogen bond is going to break. Those electrons will be used to form the pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen, expelling the leaving group. And so that's how you can oxidize a secondary alcohol into a ketone. So all of the halogens, like iodine, uh, bromine, chlorine, they can all oxidize a secondary alcohol in this particular fashion.